There's another beautiful integral involving both kinds of trigonometric functions. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x divided by the hyperbolic sine, or the sinh of x. And I got this integral from my friend Daniel's channel, who solved it using contour integration, which was extremely cool, and I've provided a link to his video in the description. Do check that out, and do subscribe to his channel as well, he makes amazing content. Anyway, I'm gonna approach this differently. First up, let's call the integral i for reference purposes. And I'd like to start off by expanding the sinh function here. Now, sinh x is defined as e to the x minus e to the negative x by 2. So this implies that i equals twice the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x divided by e to the x minus e to the negative x dx. Next up, I'd like to turn my attention toward the sine function. And we know from Euler's wonderful formula that sine x equals the imaginary part of e to the ix. So this implies that our integral i can be written as twice the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the ix divided by e to the x minus e to the negative x dx. Now let's expand using e to the negative x. So multiplying upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative x, we can write i as twice the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times e to the ix divided by 1 minus e to the negative 2x dx. And now I have a structure on which I can invoke the geometric series. So we know that the reciprocal of 1 minus x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k where the absolute value of x is less than 1. And this condition is valid for e to the negative 2x on our interval of integration. So this implies that 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2x can be expanded as the sum over k of e to the negative 2kx. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals twice the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the ix times e to the negative x times the sum over k of e to the negative 2kx dx. And because these two here are independent of the k variable, we can just slip them inside the summation operator and we can write this as twice the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of e to the ix times e to the multiplying out the two exponential functions. We have e to the negative 2k plus 1x integration with respect to x. Now, can we or can we not switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? Well, we have this complex exponential function, which we know is a bounded function and we have this damped exponential function. So yeah, there are no problems regarding boundedness or convergence. So using Fubini's theorem, we can perform the switch up and we have twice the imaginary part of the sum over k of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the ix times e to the negative 2k plus one x dx. And this integration is pretty easy to carry out so let me just write this here. Integral from 0 to infinity. e to the factoring out the x after multiplying the exponentials gives me negative 2k plus 1 minus i times x dx. So on integration, I have e to the negative 2k plus 1 minus i times x divided by negative 2k plus 1 minus i with the limits being 0 and infinity. Now... Writing the exponential function in the numerator as e to the negative 2kx plus x, or just the way it was before anyway, negative 2k plus 1x times e to the ix, then we see here that in the limit as x tends to infinity, this term here approaches zero. So the entire thing collapses to zero in the limit as x approaches infinity. However, as x approaches zero, both exponentials approach one. So we have the two negatives canceling out, and we're left with one by 2k plus one minus i as the result of the integration. So this implies 
that i equals twice the imaginary part of the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 minus i. And we now need to separate this term here into real and imaginary parts. So we can expand using the conjugate, and we have the sum over k of 2k plus 1 plus i divided by 2k plus 1 squared minus i squared, which is, of course, negative 1, so you have a plus 1 down here. And the imaginary part here is just 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1. So we have 2 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1. So we now have this infinite series problem, which is pretty cool. To evaluate it, I'm going to have to invoke the series expansion for the cotangent function, where cotangent x equals the sum over the integers k of 1 by x plus k times pi. Link in the description below for a proof. So, first up, I want to transform this into a tangent. So for that, x needs to go to the pi by 2 minus x realm. So that means on the left I have the tangent of x, and on the right I have the sum over the integers k of 1 by pi by 2 minus x plus k times pi. And on the right hand side we see that we can factor out a pi from pi by 2 and k times pi, so that'll give us pi times 1 half plus k minus x. And of course with further simplification you can write this as 2k plus 1 divided by 2. Next up, I want to go to the from the x realm to the i times x realm. And x here is a real number, so i times x is a purely is purely an imaginary number. So we have the tangent of i x equal to the sum over k of 1 by pi times 2k plus 1 by 2 minus i times x. And the left hand side here is equivalent to i times the hyperbolic tangent of x, and on the right, I can expand using the conjugate to separate into real and imaginary parts. So in that case, I'm going to get pi by 2 times 2k plus 1 plus i times x divided by pi squared by 4 times 2k plus 1 squared plus x squared. And for the series evaluation, I'm interested in the value of x being equal to pi by 2, but first up, notice something. The hyperbolic tangent of a real number x is a real number. So i times hyperbolic tan x is, again, purely an imaginary number. So that means separating into real and imaginary parts, we notice that this here will correspond to the real part, and i times x corresponds to the imaginary part because the denominator is purely a real number. So separating into real and imaginary parts and evaluating at x equal to pi by 2 gives me the sum over the integers k of pi by 2 divided by pi squared by 4 times 2k plus 1 squared plus pi squared by 4. So we can factor out a pi squared by 4, and we can also expand using pi squared by 4 as well as 2 by pi. So on simplification, this means we should have pi by 2 times the hyperbolic tangent of pi by 2 on the left, and this should equal the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1. But this here is the sum over all the integers k. I'm interested in the sum over the non-negative integers. So for that, let's decompose the structure on the right-hand side. So we have the sum over the positive integers k, as well as the sum over the negative integers, and we also have the term corresponding to k equals 0 which is 1 by 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 by 2. Now let's analyze the two series, the ones over the positive and the negative integers. So, 
the sum over the positive integers of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1, and we also have the sum over the negative integers of 1 by 2k uh, plus 1 squared plus 1. And if I perform a transformation from the k realm to the negative k realm, in that case I have the sum over the positive integers again, of 1 by 1 minus 2k squared, which of course can be written as 2k minus 1 squared plus 1, because, well, we're squaring it, so yeah, we can just switch up the order. No harm in that, and let's analyze this a bit more. The first term in this series corresponds to k equals to 1, which gives us 1 by 3 squared plus 1, whereas the first term here is 1 by 1 squared plus 1. And everything else is exactly the same as this series in terms of the, you know, the actual terms. So that means if I just include this term in the series, 1 by 1 plus uh, 1 by 2 times 0 plus 1 squared plus 1, which corresponds to 1 by 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 half, as in if I include this term within the series, as in I make it the sum over the non-negative integers of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1, then I see that this infinite series matches this infinite series term for term. And all this means is that these two infinite series are in fact equal, and hence I can just write this as the result, I can write this result as 2 times the sum over the positive, uh, the non-negative integers k of, well, wait, let me just make some better arrows, I can write this result as twice of this infinite series, which is exactly the infinite series we need. So, if all of that stuff equals this stuff, and on the left-hand side we have pi by 2 times the hyperbolic tangent of pi by 2, that's quite a mess, but it is a beautiful mess indeed. This implies that the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared plus 1 equals pi by 4 times I need some more writing space the hyperbolic tangent of pi by 2, and this was, this was fun, this was awesome. So, returning to the integration problem, i equals twice the sum, so this implies that i equals pi by 2 times the hyperbolic tangent of pi by 2, and that concludes the evaluation of this awesome integral. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, thank you, see you next time.